Stand by. First two minute interval is underway. Three, two, one, full send. Tia has been competing with herself since the very first event four days ago. Pushing the paces of unbroken sets on ring muscle-ups and bar mouse-ups when no one else would because she can. Pushing the pace on something like a pegboard because why not? I can't wait to see what she attempts to do here in the first two minutes of this event. She and Laurel Horvath solidly entrenched in their spots in the overall leaderboard. First and second overall. Now, Sean, the last time we saw a yoke in competition at this weight was the final event in 2018. The two athletes that went one and two are the two athletes on the top of the leaderboard with Tia and Laura. But it was Laura that took that event over Tia Toomey. 425 pounds on the yoke. That's Tia Toomey. Has one Andy Thoris Thorastotter is to the yoke first. 35 seconds here. Here's Tia Toomey and Laura Horvath. Katrin Davis on her on there as well. And Laura Horvath had a good pace going, but just got too forward on that. She's back to work. You can't run with this. Toomey out front at the bottom of your screen. Horvath is on the right of her. 15 seconds to go in this window. Horvath now pulling even with Toomey. Toomey continuing to work. She has yet to put that yoke down. Four seconds to go. Got to get past the black. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Tia Toomey just a couple of feet short. I don't know what to say watching this the dominance that is continuing on the floor and on the field with Tia Toomey. It is incredible what we are seeing right now. Is it too early and selfish to ask her to come back for six? Laura Horvath got into the blue on her carry. Now Laura Horvath's mistake twice was trying to go too fast. She is actually faster on the yoke if she's in control than Tia Toomey is. But the problem now is that she's going to have to get there about five to seven seconds faster than Tia. For the, the trick on the yoke, stand up, then walk. You cannot start walking right from the stand. You have to establish that so your yoke doesn't swing back and forth. Second two-minute round is underway, and this will be the last round for Tia Toomey and Laurel Horvath. One of the things we don't talk about in GC sit-ups is the effect that it has on your legs and your hip flexors. The GC sit-up isn't a, like, ab workout, right? Your abs are getting sore because they're securing your midline, but it's all hip flexors and legs, which can really take away from your stability on the yoke. Annie Thoris' daughter was one of the first women to the cheese curd burpee over the hay. She's on the left of your screen in the white shirt and black leggings. Laura Horvath is in the middle, second place overall. And then Tia Toomey in the red pants and white shirt looking for her eighth event win of the competition. One more for Tia Toomey, and one more for Annie Thorstadter. They just have to put that curd up and over, and then they will head back to the yoke. And Annie Thorstadter and Kristen Holta. Holta on the left. Annie Thorstadter trying to erase that 10-point deficit to move into third. Tia Toomey sprinting to the yoke. A couple of feet left. Win number eight for Tia Toomey. Gabriella Magala got in. Laura Horvath is across. 
And I think uh -oh. Holta may have beaten Thoris' daughter. Wow. It was close, but Thoris' daughter got her chip across a second ahead of Holta, so Thoris' daughter will cut Holta's 10-point lead for third place in half. That was great for Annie, but even better for Holta, only to lose five points in an event just because she's not the stronger of the two athletes. But when it comes to the yoke, you can't really say whether a barbell one rep max is going to equate to an odd object max like a yoke carry. And I hope they're keeping the game's record book in pencil because you're going to have to keep erasing it because Tia <laughs> Tumi keeps rewriting it. Now 32 career wins, the most ever. And if you watch the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Challenge, this is a young girl from Tia Toomey's gym, and she's saying hi to her. She actually took her out on the competition floor at the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Challenge. It was a great moment. And as good as Tia Toomey is at fitness, she's an even better person. Absolutely. And that's what you want to see is ambassadors of the sport, but also ambassadors of the CrossFit community in what that is really all about. You're not a different person outside the barricade than you are to the athletes competing on the competition floor. That's the beauty. That's why everyone is so drawn to this competition. That's what makes the CrossFit Games special because we can empathize and understand what they're going through. And they also appreciate the position that they're in as well. There are 11 women left working here in this third of four intervals. This one also two minutes. Ram Trucks, the only truck brand to win Motor Trend Truck of the Year three years in a row. Visit ram.com to learn more. Haley Adams in fifth place overall. You saw her working away. Adams trying to keep herself there. The red line, the race for the podium, and Annie Thorsauter has shaved five points off of Holtz's lead. Haley Adams now needs to get in as quickly as she can to keep those two within striking distance. Mal O'Brien is closest to the camera. Haley Adams is in the middle. As we are back on the yoke. Ten seconds left to go. Okay. Mal O'Brien. Oh. Couple seconds left. She's gonna make it into the blue. Oh, that's tough. That's, I believe that's tough. Emily Rolf at the other end of the field who got into the blue as well. Emily Rolf has an event win under her belt. She took event 10 to open up day number three. And Rolf currently sits in 16th place overall. There's Christy Aramo O'Connell who was in sixth place coming into this event. Final interval will be three minutes long. 13th event after four days. And a completely different test than we've seen so far of the first 12 that we had, right? We've had a lot of, a lot of vertical stuff, a lot of pulling, some pushing, snatch, cleans, run. This type of just massive core smash from front to back and then vertical with that yoke. It's just such a unique test because of look at the difference of finishers within this event. When was the last time outside something that lasted more than an hour? Have you seen an eight to 10 minute difference between finishing athletes? And that's a really cool, I would say, exposure of a lot of athletes out here in the competition field. So yet again, we have another unique piece of the puzzle as we build that programming picture leading into the final event. Rogue is the official equipment supplier of the 2021 Noble CrossFit Games and the official air bike of CrossFit. Christy Aramo O'Connell on her eight cheese curd burpees over that four foot hay bale, 70 pounds on the curd.
three minutes here in this final interval. Haley Adams again, fifth place overall. She was only 14 points back of Annie Thor's daughter for fourth coming into this event. There's Christy Aramo O'Connell, who is one spot back at Adams in sixth. And here's the deal. None of these three movements by themselves are anything these athletes are not used to. But it's the combination of the two leading into the GHD that is what I would say beautiful about this event. Smashing the core on the GHD, smashing it on the posterior side with the sandbag. And when you get to the yoke, it's not like a barbell or say a heavy back squat where your hips are behind your shoulders. You gotta get your hips underneath that bar or else that yoke is gonna start to swing. Bell O'Brien is in. Haley Adams has the yoke down as Emily Rolfe has come across at the top of your screen. And Haley Adams is now across. Emma Carey is getting set to finish. 40 seconds left. Turi Helgadotter has finished. Now Emma Tall is in. Bailey Rail, Emma Carey, which leaves Christy Aramo O'Connell as the last woman on the floor. And she is in. But it's Tia Toomey who wins her eighth event of the competition.